Hey guys! Hello! As you can hear, we're road back trip. in our, road trip. our studio. Road trip! <laughs> uh, because of the echoing. And we're, we're not going to have time to fix the echoing before our... Road trip! Road trip. One thing we can do though is um, show you guys... More preparation! Yeah. Expensive road trip, I tell you what. Yeah, no kidding. But so, I think once we spend all of this this time, we'll be able to take more road trips and not have to spend anything on those. Road trip! Road trip! Yay! Yay! So we got an inverter because we have like a whole bunch of electronics that need to be uh, dealt with. And it's red, pink, pink red. Well, these lights make it look a little bit pinker than it would normally look. It's normally red. It's red. <laughs> oh, it's got a 20 amp fuse, which it should never draw 20 amps because it's only 100 watts. I see. So 12 volts. I think so. Hmm. Well, well if, it, if it ever does pull 20, there's definitely a problem and it should pop that fuse. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. So it looks pretty simple. It's just got an on and off switch, one power outlet, and then it goes into the car. Um, yeah, we got to plug that into the accessory. Uh -huh. And uh, we should be able to charge the laptops and camera batteries and all that. We're probably putting a uh, uh, power strip onto this. Is that is that doable? Yeah. Oh, it won't draw too much? Well, what draws too much is putting too many things on it at once. Oh. And we're not putting anything heavy on it, so. Okay. Just a couple battery chargers, and that's not much at all. Okay. A lot less than 100 watts, anyway. So, that's our uh, road trip uh, production edition for this week, and I don't know, I think, I think we've picked up everything that we need uh, in terms of uh, mobile production, and the camera stuff was already sorted last week, and now we've got our power situation taken care of, and at the end of the show here, we'll update you guys on the, the, the laptop situation. Who's up? All right, let's get Sounds to the good. show. All right, so you guys remember this uh, from the last couple weeks. We're still working on it. Uh, we used the Sawmax. 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 Uh, to actually <laughs> uh, cut the bezel. So uh, let's take a look and see how that turned out. Yes. So here we have a front view of the unit, mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, uh, put our bezel back on. Okay. All right, so we've got uh, that bezel on there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I sanded yeah. it down a bit just because we're getting it ready for primer and paint and all that. But uh, mm -hmm. what were you going to show them? That saw max was a little bit rough cutting that. Uh, I tried to use a straight edge, a, uh, a jig to Cut that, and the Sawmax didn't like working with jigs. Yeah. The rest of them are really straight, and they were done freehand. So. Yep. If anybody picks up a Sawmax, go for freehand first. It seems to it likes to go straight without any help. And uh, just to give you guys a visual of what we did here, three by four becomes sixteen by nine. Magic. And we'll throw uh, the LCD up against that so we can see how well we did. Indeed. All right, so we can see the LCD module that Joe Grant sent over mm -hmm. is uh, perfectly smaller than this. So uh, this should fit in real nice. We'll need to um, create the, uh, the inside structure to hold it into place because the LCD has no mounting points. So it's going to have to sort of be held, and uh, we're going to put some edging on this just to make sure the corners are nice and neat and uh, even this out. And this has been sanded, like Eddie said, and we'll be going into paint with that probably this week. Woohoo! Depending on the time and all that. Sounds good. Alrighty. I think that's it for this little fella. Okay. Aha! Yes. What is this? This is my Alinko DX. SR8. It's uh, my new ham rig because the last one, a Kenwood TS120S, um, I, it almost seemed like it didn't transmit at all. 
And uh, at this point... It probably was transmitting. It probably was, but something is the going on. The <laughs> PLL on it was decoupling from the, the, the VO, the variable frequency oscillator. VFO? Yeah, so the phase lock loop yeah. was decoupling from the variable frequency oscillator, making it not, its receiving side would shut off after like 15, 20 minutes. Oh yeah, that's true. But that doesn't explain the transmission side, does it? Yeah, you've figured out what the transmission side is. Our antenna system? Yeah, because the same exact thing happened to this radio. Oh. When she would key down on the old radio, she would get this massive amount of uh, uh, feedback. Garbled sound from here. Yeah. And uh, that's because she, d she wasn't grounding her radio <laughs> and because the antenna is so close. So I think we can take a second here to show the antenna. Yep. So this is the new modern rig. Um, this is... It's powered by my SEC uh, 1235M power supply, and from here we'll go ahead and maybe trace. Are we able to trace the antenna? Yeah, the antenna is very close to the radio. And so we're we're in a A-frame loft, and so from the back of this radio, uh, we have our coax cable going up, 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 up along the so, uh, roof there, or roof line, I guess, ceiling line. And it goes to the center of the Balin, which is... Balin. Balin, Balin, Balin uh, which is, I guess, the center coil area of our 10 meter dipole antenna. And if you see those blue wires, they're coming off of the sides of the dipole to the... Uh, down the edges of our ceiling. So, um, we're not quite sure where, well, I'm not quite sure where there are major issues here in inducing RF feedback, um, but when I am transmitting at high power levels on this, what happens is it comes back all gar like it sounds, I can hear myself being all garbled and distorted. Uh, so some of the fellas have said that um, it could just be due to um, improper matching, uh, antenna matching. I don't have an SWR meter, nor do I have, <clears throat> excuse me, an antenna tuner. To help her with this, I with uh, so, I took some uh, solid core wire. Normally, normally you'd use some heavy braided stuff for this, but um, off the back of a radio, I attached solid core, very... Uh, uh, thick gauge wire to her grounding lug and mm -hmm. uh, ran it actually into an outlet to the house grounding <clears throat> lug uh, just to see if it would help yep. and it did quite a bit. Yep. She wasn't able to run her radio at full power yesterday. She uh... Well before grounding it. Yeah. After grounding it it's, it's still okay. You'll still well, hear some of the garbage. When she so. was running it she she was seeing her keyboard typing random letters, <laughs> and um, she actually crashed her mouse. It's true. That was a bad situation. I don't know. I mean, there could have been a lot of things happening that were bad, because cause my monitor is right here, and that's no good. <laughs> so anyway, you're going to hop on 10 meters and see if you can get your first contact. So We'll try. I don't know. I'm not... It'd be great if it happened much. on video. Yeah, I know, that would be... I'd be like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Uh, okay. CQ, CQ, Whiskey Zero, Tango, Tango, Victor. You can hear that little bit of feedback what left. What is that? There's like something buzzing. Yeah. So, that's... I mean, if you heard all the, the weird beeps and the bloops and then the buzz and then also the... um my voice coming back distorted. That's kind of what the situation's been. And you guys see our setup, so if you have any ideas, please do let us know. I imagine and, everybody's going to say move the antenna outside. Well, yeah, but then I'd have to buy coax cable. That's like... 
really, actually here, let's go to low power. Low power I can operate this line without any issues. Well, in terms of like transmitting without hearing myself, I'll show that. CQ, CQ, Whiskey Zero, Tango, Tango, Victor. Nobody loves me. Ah, one day I will be able to do a QSO. <laughs> anyway, but this is my... So, so what frequency do you hang out on 10 meters? Uh, 28.4 megahertz. Okay, and that's the international... Call uh, out, I think. Uh, yeah. Calling frequency for single sideband on 10 meters. Yep. And that's upper sideband. Yep. So, thus far, no such luck, but... Um, so you guys all set your radios. As long as the sun is up, it should work pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, set your radios at 28.4 and uh, help Addie get her first QSO. Yes, please. Alright, do we have anything else to say about this today? Uh, no, I don't think so. The only thing is I really like the screen. It's very visible. <laughs> so, let me just turn down the volume. There we go. All right, let's get this show on the road. Hi. All right, welcome back to the fifth part of our XB tutorial. Um, today we're going to be looking at a few things, including simple integer receiving. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you doing integer receiving on Pi Day? Um, Pi is I an don't... irrational number, and it cannot be represented by an integer. That's a fib, because if you <laughs> use base Pi you can represent pi in an integer, but that base wouldn't really be useful for other stuff. True. Well, I, I don't know, but that's You know what, what pi day is. Yes, I do. It's, uh, it's our awesome, awesome friend Kumiko's birthday. Happy birthday, Kumiko! Woohoo! And that's like really important because Kumi's like our best friend. Yes, extremely important. Even if Kumi's a little bit irrational at times. <laughs> She's a ninja. What can you say? <laughs> all right, all right. I'm done interrupting. Okay, thanks. Part five. <laughs> Although, really, happy birthday, Kumiko. Um, okay, I so... I had to make sure that Kumi infiltrated your uh, XB tutorial. Thanks. Uh, thank, thank you, Whisker. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, so, we are going to be doing, like I said, a simple integer reception as well as multiple integer reception. And our setup is going to be looking like this. Uh, the PCU is going to be connected to one prop BOE, and that's going to have an XB on it. Uh, ignore this remote XB title here. And then the other prop BOE will be connected to the XB and just powered um, through like a wall ward. So that's lovely. That's fine. Not a problem. And actually, I think you could probably connect it to the PC via USB just for the power. Just remember that when you're looking at the test query and the COM, uh, the terminal window to use the correct one. So uh, another reminder also is to always have your jumper pins, uh, jumper wires where you need them from pin zero to D out of the XP and from pin one of your microcontroller to your uh, D in of your XP. Otherwise, what you code in software won't translate to hardware, and then it won't work. So we are going to go ahead and start by uh, looking at the code here that's going to be on the base node, which is our serial pass-through code. Um, so we set the clock uh, settings here with the crystal settings. Um, we have the pins that we're going to be using, the baud rate, that we're going to be using for the XB and PC communications. We set aside uh, memory space for our cog, uh, an extra cog that's going to be running. We have the objects that we'll be using, uh, which you can find on the object exchange. This one called full duplex serial. Then we have uh, just the start of our communications for the PC and the XB and um, the appropriate data buffer flushing. Uh, so that any stragglers behind just get flushed when we start communicating. And on the remote node, what we're going to have is this simple decimal receive code. 
Uh, so let me just make sure that that's what's loaded on to the EEPROM. Loading, loading, programming EEPROM. Verifying. Lovely. Okay, so this is the simple integer code. And what it does is um, we set the pins again in this con section. We have the object, xb object underscore two. And then we initialize communications for the xb. We wait 1000 milliseconds or one second. And then a string will show up saying awaiting data. Um, and then whatever return, whatever value we send will come back um, after a carriage return. So let's look at that, x dash c t u. Um, this should be on COM5, so I'm going to go ahead and test query that. And it comes out good. And uh, let's do 10. And when I press carriage return, the remote node sends back a 10. 20, 30, 42, even 42 comes back. Now, if I decide to assemble a packet, so, you know, sending a bunch of numbers all at once, uh, let's do 20, 30, 40, 50. We'll send the data. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. So what happened here is I pressed, a, I gave a carriage return after all the numbers except for 50. You'll notice it's still blinking there. So what is sent then is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, but because there wasn't a carriage return, it didn't send it back. So I'm going to try putting a carriage return and sending the data. <laughs> so there's a little bit of funniness, but 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And what we get is an odd straggling 50, I assume, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Delimiters are very important. Right. And actually, we're going to show that next. Um, so the next portion is going to be the um, the multiple integer receive. And let's see if I can find that. Multiple integer receive. And this uses delimiters, which are what I like to think of as little flags saying that, hey, uh, notice me um, in all the noise. I'm the one that's important. And what this code essentially does, um, which I loaded onto the remote node EEPROM, is I have, well, let's see here, it initializes communications for the XP, waits one second, says awaiting data, uh, awaiting data. <laughs> um, and then it looks at the data coming in from the computer. So if the data, if it shows a uh, exclamation mark, that would be the delimiter. And then whatever it sees after that exclamation mark, it will call as one, value one and value two. Um, and I go into this code analysis a lot more in, the, uh, in my Tumblr. So if you want all of the tiny details, that's where you can see it. But um, demonstration is probably easiest to, to show. And just to let you know, when we run this demo, you'll see a lot of periods. Essentially, if the um, rem if the base node doesn't see anything being given back to it, it'll just put a lot of periods until it's receiving something. So we'll run x dash ctu again. We'll test com port five. Everything looks great. We'll go to the terminal, and I'm going to reset this just so that we can see the awaiting data portion. I might have to stop that. Give me one second. Clear screen. Ah, awaiting data. Okay, so it's awaiting data, and then you see all these periods um, that are just hanging out there. And normally in the um, simple integer receive, we would have seen that 10 and a carriage return would have returned something, but we see here that it doesn't, okay? But if I do, if I add a delimiter, so um, exclamation mark, you'll see that it stops and it waits to see what comes out. So the value one was negative one because nothing was really sent, and the value two is twenty. I'm gonna, and I, that's actually probably because I waited too long. So I'm gonna try going a little faster. 
And what you see is that it sees the delimiter and sets whatever value is right after it as value one. So 20 is here in 20. And any value that's after it um, goes into value two. I'm going to try to assemble a packet so that it's easier for us to look at this. I'll do 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So with all these numbers, remember it's searching for the delimiter, which is the exclamation mark. So when I send that information, you see that um, we have the delimiter, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, but value 1 is 20, value 2 is 30. And I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. We'll do another packet here again. Uh, so let's go 20, 30, delimiter 40, 50, 60. And we send the data. And what you see is, so 20, 30 doesn't get recognized, but it sees the delimiter, so it goes after that. It takes 40 as value 1 and 50 as value 2. And just because I can, I'm going to just try having a whole bunch of delimiter uh, values. Delimiter 40, delimiter 50, delimiter 60, delimiter 70, 80, 90 without delimiters. And let's see what happens there. Send data. So it seems that um, whenever it notices a delimiter, uh, the second value, whether it has a delimiter or not, is value 2. So delimiter 40 becomes goes into value 1, delimiter 50, um, because it's after delimiter 40, goes as 50. And then value 1, uh, you see it goes again, because we it sees another delimiter, 60, and then takes a number right after it, 70. But it ignores 80 and 90 because, well, they're not included. They're not invited to the party. So... This actually is really useful um, when you want to make sure that the system can see a value. Uh, and I'll be showing it either next week or the week after when I show you guys how to control an RC servo with the XBs. Is that it for this, uh, this week's Yeah, I think tutorial? so. I think it is. All right, you guys can find lots of extra information on all these things if you go to tymkrs.com and look for the articles link on the side of the page. Uh, Eddie puts up daily blogs on uh, XPs and other electronics-related projects every single day. It's true. All right, let's, uh, let's see what else we got. Okay. All right, so we got a, a lot of work done this week. Uh, we did despite uh, the fact that I was very, very distracted. Um, yeah, this one. Well, no, this is part of what we need to do. And I was actually working on something that I can't talk about yet. Oh. But we'll get to that in the near future. Yes. Probably end of April, May, I think. May, May. I'll actually be able to start showing some of that stuff off. Maybe. And uh, that's a really, really, really cool project, so. Uh, something definitely to look forward to happening in the background. Uh -huh. All right, let's see here. Um, so last week we were talking about how I got this uh, new laptop off of eBay for the road trip and uh, uh, because it has the built-in GPS and uh, 3G and all that sort of thing and it's tiny and uh, it's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> all right, so, but it had Windows 7 Ultimate on it and it wasn't supposed to, and it wasn't uh, activated. Yep, and we had the key for Windows Home, home Premium. premium. Yeah. Yeah. So the least expensive option that I could think of to fix the whole situation uh, was to pick up the... Uh, recovery disks. Yeah, the official recovery disks for this particular unit from Sony yep. at a cost of like... 28 bucks. $28. So the least expensive Windows 7 ever. Yep. It was only 28 bucks. Now, mind you, I'd already paid for it because I bought the dang laptop, but whatever. Now, obviously, this laptop is so small, it doesn't have a uh, DVD Disc drive. drive, so we also had to pick up one of these, and that'll be useful for other things, too, like uh, my mini, my Mac mini, 
that we do all the audio production on also does not have a drive. So in case I ever need one for that, we've got it there. Yep. DVDs are definitely uh, a medium that are that is way 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 on the way out. So, Dying out. Yeah. USB keys and SD cards and cloud. Well, the cloud is not necessarily the best idea. It's a good idea in principle, but in practice, there's a lot of problems. Oh. Yeah. Well, whichever. There are many other options besides DVD. Yeah. I, I really, some... if you're doing anything serious, I wouldn't recommend the cloud for storage. Um, yeah. Okay. So, oh, I'd like to make uh, one little announcement here on the show. Um, I don't think we've talked about it here yet. But we were doing a song every single Sunday for most of the last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was really fun and everything. But uh, I wanted to sort of change gears a little bit and maybe try a writing project. So I'm going to be, uh, uh, my ulterior motive for this laptop here is to be able to uh, have something that I can type on uh, while we're out and about to work on my book. When I'm not here working on all this stuff for you lovely, lovely people. Mm -hmm. So I've got a nice little head start going on that. And on the road trip, Addie's going to have a hard time getting my attention because I'm going to be t t typing away. And uh, I'm, I'm writing from uh, the idea that I want to put together something that the sort of people that enjoy watching this show will enjoy reading that book. We hope. Very, uh, very nerdy yep. stuff. Yep. Because I know you guys are all brilliant geniuses. Yep. All right. So um, uh, this week on Zombie Tech is going to be a really, really fun one. You guys remember the Joe Grand episode a while back mm -hmm. from uh, Discovery Channel's Prototype This? Mm -hmm. And The Loft. Yeah. We've been hanging out with Joe a lot. And um, uh, he got uh, his buddy from the show, Zaz. Brooks to come on to Zombie Tech with Joe yep. to talk about all of the behind the scenes craziness that you're never going to hear um, about prototype this and working in professional television and doing engineering for TV. All sorts of great, great stories and information. And we're going to be kicking that off starting this week. Yeah. And it's going to keep going. And going. And going for a couple weeks. So uh, that's going to be really fun and I'm sure you guys are all going to get a major kick out of it. It was really fun talking to those guys for like three hours straight. Mm -hmm. We broke it up into multiple episodes so you know it's not too much to handle. Uh, but yeah, really awesome. Make sure you check out Zombie Tech and that one is going to be going up Thursday which is tomorrow from this video if you're watching it immediately. Yeah. Okay. And uh, on first spin, Eddie was learning about registers and... Uh, constants. Constants. Uh, she's getting into some pretty you know, interesting stuff using the propeller, propeller to do really good work. Um, you guys have been listening to her XB tutorials. Yeah. Um, some of the reason why she's able to do those is because of first spin and all the stuff she's been learning about microcontrollers. So if you haven't checked out First Spin, go ahead and run over there. It's firstspin.tv. Yep. All right. Well, that's it for me for this week. Uh, you got anything else, Annie? Nope. That's it for me. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, getting to share our projects with you guys has been a great experience over this last year and a half. We really, really like it, and we really appreciate you guys watching. It's true. All right. We will see you guys next Wednesday. Bye. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.